yeah hi sundaram hello sir yeah so you were telling that you have experience in uh, cypress automation i think you have 2.5 to 3 years of experience right so can you tell us something about the automation framework that you are working on uh yes yeah, so this is a cypress automation where cypress cypress is a like javascript based uh, automation framework uh, which is mainly for uh, end to end uh, uh, test cases and uh, it uses like uh, mocha and chai uh, for the assertions that is very powerful and uh, yeah that's it mm -hmm. okay so whenever you are asked about the automation framework so you can explain about the reporting mechanism that you have used any utilities that you have used is it integrated with ci cd or you are running it manually so those all aspects you can cover so let's say okay. in your case maybe if it is integrated with ci cd then you might be using some azure devops tool or uh, i am using gitlab uh, yeah so how do you trigger your automation uh so uh we can trigger from gitlab itself like go to the build and uh, trigger the pipeline also we can trigger for cli as well by passing the uh and npx uh, cypress run right, so right. these two kind of methods are there great great uh how many types of assertions are available in cypress uh in cypress there is hmm. uh like many assertions we can use as required like uh, there is a uh, should should assertion that the in that assertion we can use like should have a property uh, mm. uh, you know like for accordions if you need to check like is this if it is expanded or not so you can mm. use have a attribute uh, aria expanded uh, mm -hmm. that will take three parameters and if you just need to check that if uh, text is visible or not you can check that it should be visible and uh, like we mainly use should but mm -hmm. and uh, according to that we use parameters uh, given in should mm -hmm. okay okay now let me share my screen Yeah. So, is my screen visible to you? Yes. Yeah. So, this is a scenario that you have to automate. There are two drop downs on a page that has been assigned to you, and one drop down is for the uh, state. Second drop down is for the city, right? Now, what code would you write in order to select the state as Maharashtra and the city as Pune? uh so uh first uh, i will get the drop down so cy dot get uh with the drop down id your class or uh in my case in my project uh we use uh find by role mm -hmm. so we can uh directly use like find by role drop down and drop down name and then we can uh give the value of the uh select uh, like a uh, value of drop down uh, like whatever we need to select or we can mm -hmm. select by index as well and same thing we will do in uh, second case as well mm -hmm. right right so you will work by index yeah uh, index is good because uh, by passing value sometimes value change Mm. Uh, like in my case in my banking project uh, right now there is a migration from uh, ember to react so those values are being changed so i use mm. index i prefer index because it's uh, like more reliable okay okay great fine okay what are hooks in cypress uh cypress in hooks are like uh like we use uh, in test ng uh, before method mm. uh, it is similar to that in hooks uh, we uh, pass some codes to uh, if we need to do something before running the test actual test like there are before and before each hook and after and after each hook mm. uh, so in hook mostly what we do is uh, we uh, write cy dot fixtures and get the uh, data from the fixture file whatever data is required in test and then we pass it. 
right right so what is hooks in, what are hooks in cypress so let's say if this question is asked to you in a real time interview then you can explain in such a manner see so first of all you have to explain what are hooks so hooks in cypress are nothing but that will allow you to run the code at specific points in your test suit or test case and as you mentioned similar to test ng there are several types of hooks that are available someone will help you to uh, execute before all the test in a suit after will help you to run all after all the test in the current suit are completed right yes. for example if you have to perform some cleanup operation such as deleting some temporary files or resetting the licenses that has been installed in your applications for which for the application which is under automation right so those kind of things before each is also a hook that was that is commonly used to reset the application state or it's a kind of a prerequisite that is something required to perform the task before the application starts before the test execution starts after each is the hook that will be running after each test in the current suit has been completed right again it is before before each after after each is similar to before test before suit before method that you have in test ng okay is it possible to interact with the dome elements in cypress in cypress yeah yeah do you have any uh, provision in cypress that you can interact with dome elements uh we can interact with dom elements using cy.get mm -hmm. so what does cy.get does cy.get uh is uh, similar to the finds elements in selenium mm -hmm. it gets the elements by id and class cypress does not uh, like support xpath uh, by default but we mm -hmm. can uh, integrate with plugins cypress plugins mm -hmm. Right, right. So XPath cannot be used. So which is the locator that you are using in Cypress? Well, in my case, we uh, use, uh, as I told you, find by role, which is mm -hmm. uh, like, I think, a Mocha framework or something. I need to check. But uh, uh, we uh, integrate that by installing uh, plugins that help us to uh, get the elements by role. Like, there is some button, uh, suppose there is a submit button. So uh, what we will do is uh, we will uh, write find by role and uh, that the role of the element is a button. So I will write button and then I will give the name of that button, like button name is submit. So it will directly give. So by this, uh, one more thing happens, like it kind of checks the accessibility of the element as well. Mm -hmm. So is it possible to integrate Cypress with browser stack? Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I have done a POC to integrate the uh, browser stack with Cypress. So what we will do is uh, like we need to uh, like uh, install the browser stack plugin. Uh, mm -hmm. npm install um, browser stack dot uh, Cypress. Uh, I am not remembering exact uh, plugin. So. Mm -hmm we need to do that and then we need to create a browser stack.json file in that uh, we need to pass our uh, browser stack uh, uh, access id and username and some more steps we need to do like mm -hmm. that's how we can integrate it you can integrate it right right okay. now coming back to the question uh, which i had asked the how to interact with the dome elements right yes sir. so one is the cy.get so you can use various commands that has got the provision in Cypress itself. So cy.get command is used to get a reference to a DOM element that it can be interacted with it further. Similarly, you can use cy.click. So this command will stimulate a click event on a DOM element. Then cy.type. So it is some, it will uh, type the text into the form field or the input element on the page. Then you have cy.clear, it will clear all the contents. cy.selected is used to select an option from the drop down menu. So these all commands you can use to interact with the DOM elements. Yes, sir. Okay. Then uh, browser stack was mentioned in your CV. So from there I asked. So whenever you get this question, you know, so you can uh, tell that it is one of your achievement itself that you have done this integration and how much time did it took and what was the ROI that you achieved? 
by using that integration by doing that integration right so those things you can explain in an interview hmm. now in your cv you have mentioned you have designed and implemented end-to-end -end automation framework using cypress for web applications resulting in 50 percent reduction in testing time so how did you come to a conclusion that there is a 50 percent of reduction in the time of testing uh well sir uh, that is not exactly i have just written it okay. but uh, what i can say is like uh, when i came into the project there was many failures of the test cases mm -hmm. and uh, you know there was too many weights uh, uh, the testers have uh, had not like very efficient code so when mm -hmm. i came in uh, i also had not like very efficient in cypress but i started learning it and mm -hmm. i followed the instructions of the developers they used to review my code so uh, from there uh, i like actually done the cypress and i realized that uh, there need there needs the custom commands like uh, custom functions as well mm -hmm. to like do uh, do some uh, setup for data as well like suppose uh, uh, sometimes what happens is uh, a test case is written for a data but what happens is after uh, that test case fails so that data also gets like um, suppose uh, there should be a button but mm -hmm. uh, test when test case fails that button will be gone because uh, uh, that test case doesn't created uh, some uh, like some that test case doesn't do some setup due to which that button is not showing there so what i done is like created a function it will check that uh, if that button is there or not and if that is not there it will create that thing but and then uh, actual test will run mm -hmm. like i does this kind of thing to uh, like make efficient or automation suit mm -hmm. so you mean so just to reiterate and confirm so earlier the automation test did not had a kind of a uh, validating the button verification the but verifying the button is there or not and then you implemented few of the methods or you wrote few of the functions that actually checks the button is present or not and accordingly it will perform the action on it is it true so uh hmm. sir uh like i am working in a banking project it's a okay. kind of complex to mm -hmm. uh, make you understand exact thing what i have done but okay. suppose uh, there is do you know booster or bucket uh, booster or bucket no. okay what so uh, let, let me just explain it uh, mm -hmm. in banking there is a system to uh, save our uh, mm -hmm. uh, money they have uh, uh, just uh, yeah uh, so just to explain you uh, suppose mm -hmm. uh, uh, we are uh, creating something like mm -hmm. uh, uh, like we are adding something so mm -hmm. if uh, that uh, thing is not there the removing the remove button is not there because that element itself is not there so mm -hmm. if we create that then that remove element will appear there so okay. uh, if there is a test case to remove that element and that mm -hmm. element is already not there that mm -hmm. test case will fail so what i have done is like to check first that uh, that element is there or not and then like do this stuff okay okay so one kind of a checkpoint whether that element is there and yes yeah the right kind of there. checkpoint yeah okay okay great great good thing to understand okay now how do you handle timeouts in cypress test in cypress uh, we uh, use timeout like we can give timeout in uh, our uh, um, like for particular element we can give timeout uh, mm -hmm. there is a keyword timeout and then we can after semicolon, we can pass the uh, whatever timeout is required for that element. Mm -hmm. uh, timeout is very dynamic in Cypress. Like if you give 15 seconds, it will uh, like wait uh, till the uh, element is, is uh, visible. Uh, if it is not visible after 15 seconds, it will fail. But it will not always wait for five, uh, 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. How do you find the code coverage? How do you find the automated test code coverage? automated test code code is mm -hmm. not that means sure yeah that means this. let's say if uh, management ask you or let's say if mm -hmm. your team lead or team manager ask you what is the automated test case coverage that you have so maybe 40 percent 50 percent 60 percent so mm -hmm. 
so how do you track those kind of percentage how do you track how much automation has been done in the entire application and how much is pending uh so sir these kinds of things are like tracked by qtest it provides mm -hmm. a kind of a graphical interface and mm -hmm. uh, we mark the test cases as automated and uh, not automated and manual okay. so that's how it shows them mm -hmm. uh, to higher management like what is going on in automation right uh, right so what you can explain in real time interview is there is a traceability matrix requirement traceability matrix and you will have requirements id requirements it will be mapped with the test cases id and you will be marking them as those test cases are automated or not so out of the total test cases let's say for an example 200 test cases are there out of that you are able to complete automation for 100 that means for now the automation coverage is 50 percent this is with respect to rdm if you have implemented second is if you have some tools those are integrated with your automation and those tools uh, and then you have to run the automation on your unprotected code unlike uh, i mean it so let's say whenever you will run the automation those dlls would be protected right so you will have to use unprotected bi binaries from the development team what those code coverage tools will see that which are the different lines of dlls that has got executed so accordingly, it will generate a percentage. The lines which has been executed, that means the automation is covered. The pending lines are the automation to be done. Right? Yeah. So that's how you can keep a track of how much automation test coverage has been done. Right? Okay, Sundaram, I am done with the interview. Do you have any questions for me? Um. No, sir, not like mm -hmm. kind of it's uh, interrelated, but I would like to have a feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I think it was good. Uh, you were able to answer most of the questions uh, related to Selenium, Cypress or uh, related to, sorry, Selenium we didn't cover, but yes, Cypress, you were yeah. able to answer most of the questions. Then Core Java, you were able to answer. The program you were able to write uh, with was with respect to reversing a string in Java. Right. So that program was good. The few of the things that you have to take care, maybe you just have to do a quick revision on difference between abstract class and interface. Right. Then what is constructor chaining? Right. Those kind of questions, if you can, uh, you know, revisit and then uh, it's good. Rest, rest really looks good. And your resume, your profile is also impressive. Uh, sir, regarding that, uh, you asked that uh, very good question actually from my resume that how do you come to a conclusion about that 50% mm -hmm. reduction? Right. Uh, is there a way to explain that or I should remove that? Yeah, so if you are, uh, yeah, just a second. So this is the feedback, right? Thank you. Thank you so much, Sundaram.